Hello, my name is Florian and in this short video we will have a look at how to measure the stability of a switch mode DC-DC converter using the Bode 100. To assess the stability of our DC-DC converter, we are going to measure the loop gain of the control loop. The control loop is here. Yeah? It's from the switch output to the inductor, the output capacitor, then through the feedback divider to the feedback pin. That's the control loop. And the loop gain, that's the transfer function of the control loop. And to measure the loop gain, we use the voltage injection method. For the voltage injection method, we need uh, to break the feedback loop and to insert, insert an injection resistor. And that injection resistor is placed at the injection point. It's important that the impedance at the injection point, looking backwards to the feedback loop, is much lower than the impedance in loop direction. So here, for example, we have kilo ohms of the feedback divider and um, the output of the DC-DC converter, that's a voltage source, uh, theoretically zero impedance. So very low impedance here, very high impedance here, and that's a perfect place to measure the loop gain. And the injection resistor is made small in comparison to the feedback divider, such that it doesn't uh, uh, change the operating point. So that's ohms, 10 ohms, for example and the feedback divider, that's kilo ohms. So now we found our injection point. Check out our website or our um, uh, YouTube channel to find more examples for injection points or to learn how you choose the correct injection point in your application. Now for the voltage injection method, as I said before, we need to inject the voltage and therefore we connect our injection transformer to the injection resistor. Why do we need an injection transformer? Well, that's easy. We cannot connect Bode 100 ground to the output voltage of our DC-DC converter. That wouldn't work. So this injection transformer, we use the BV100, is now injecting um, a signal, a disturbance signal, that comes from our Bode 100 signal generator. And now we need to measure the voltage at both sides or at either side of the injection resistor. So we connect channel 1. Here, using a probe, we use our PML1110 probe and measure with respect to ground. And channel 2 is connected to this side. And we measure with respect to ground as well, because the regulator is also measuring with respect to ground. The Bode 100 will measure the transfer function from the point where channel 1 is connected to the point where channel 2 is connected. And that's the entire loop gain. And on this loop gain result, we will then apply the phase margin test that is based on the Nyquist stability criterion to find the stability of our power supply. So here we have our measurement setup. The device under test is a linear technology step-down converter. It's generating 3.3 volts at uh, 1.5 amps using 200 kilohertz switching frequency. We are driving our converter with 12 volts from our power supply and we have a resistive load connected. Please take care when using electronic loads, they might interfere with the device on the test. Here we have our output current, 1.2 amps at the moment. And the Bode 100 is connected via the BVIT 100 injection transformer. And here we have the injection resistor and the two probes, channel 1 and channel 2, the PML probes that are connected to channel 1 and channel 2 of the body 100. That's the measurement setup. And we will now start the measurement. For the loop gain measurement, I use the gain phase measurement mode. Let's have a look at the hardware setup. The body 100 signal source is connected to the output of the body 100 and is driving our device under test. Channel 1 is set to high impedance and routed to the receiver 1. Channel 2 is also set to high impedance since we use external probes and is routed to receiver 2. And with this setup we measure the transfer function of our device under test. So let's start the measurement. I press the continuous sweep button and hooray, we do already get our loop gain. So let's use cursor 1. I say cursor 1, jump to 0 and this is our crossover frequency. 4.66 kHz and 50 degrees of phase margin. But be aware, this result is not correct. 
In the look and measurement, it's very important that the result is independent of the injection signal level. To test that, I use a very low injection signal level and I check if the result changes. So let's set it to minus 20 dBm. And now the result has completely changed. I use cursor 2 and now cursor 2 is already at the crossover frequency. That's 15 kHz. So before we were measuring 4.6 kHz, now it's 15.6 kHz. And this was due to an uh, excessive signal level that was too high. It was driving the feedback loop into non-linearities because of saturation effects or slew, slew rate limitations. And this was a correct measurement. Now we have the correct measurement. And to be sure that the measurement is correct, I can increase the signal level by 3 dB, so minus 17. And if I do it, the result must not change. And the crossover frequency and phase margin did stay the same. So now we are sure that the measurement is correct. But at low frequencies we do have some noise on the curve. It doesn't look that nice anymore. And for, to overcome this we can use high signal levels at low frequencies where the system is not so sensitive to higher injection levels and, and lower injection levels at higher frequencies. We use the so-called shaped level function and I have already prepared a curve that has high injection signal at low frequencies and lower injection signal at higher frequencies. And now we get a beautiful clean loop gain curve. The result is now 15.6 kHz crossover frequency and 80 degrees of phase margin. This is a very stable regulator that has a very fast reaction with 15 kHz. So we have a very stable system for the current operating condition. Let's see what happens when I change the input voltage. I store the current measurement to a memory and I reduce the input voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts. So now we are at 5 volts and we can see that the curve has changed. Currently or before we had 15 kilohertz and 80 degrees of phase margin. Now we have 11 kilohertz crossover frequency and 48 degrees of phase margin. So still a very stable system, but it became a little bit slower. If you want to be sure that your power supply works correctly on, in the field, then you have to test it for all expected input and output operating conditions. So far we have checked the phase margin in the Bode diagram. That's the phase margin test. If we look at the Nyquist diagram, we can see more stability margins. But where do they come from? The re relation between the open loop transfer function T and the closed loop transfer function G is T over 1 plus T. What happens if T becomes minus 1? Then we will have 1 minus 1, that's 0, and T divided by 0 or something divided by 0 is a lot or infinity or undefined or whatever, it's unstable. So T must never become minus 1 and that's the important fact for all stability tests. The minus 1 can be seen very nicely in the Nyquist diagram, that's here, minus 1. And the blue curve, that's our measured open loop gain or the loop gain transfer function. And if I turn this curve by the phase margin, then we will eventually hit the instability point. So the phase margin, that's the distance in degrees, how many degrees can I turn the transfer function until it hits the instability point. Then we have the gain margin. If we increase gain, the transfer function will become bigger and eventually it will hit the minus one point. So that's the gain margin. How much gain do we have left until the transfer function hits the instability point? And then there is the stability margin or vector stability margin. This is the closest distance of our transfer function to the instability point. This can be different at a different frequency than the gain margin or the phase margin. So let's check out the stability margins in the body analysis suite. We have implemented a new feature that is available with body analysis suite 313 or newer and you can find it by setting the measurement to Nyquist. So we have a Nyquist diagram now and then we go to the cursor ribbon and select stability margin calculation. And then I press the button find margins and now we have Cursor 1 phase margin 48 degrees, then we have the gain margin 23 dBs and stability margin 0 
Here we have the instability point, the closest distance to the instability point, that's this distance here. Then here we have the phase margin and here we have the gain margin. Of course, all these values can also be seen in the body diagram. So if I switch back to the body diagram, then we have all the three cursors positioned at the stability margins. And we can read the frequencies in the cursor grid. You might wonder why the instability point in our measurement was on the right side, whereas we talked about an instability point of minus one. So in the measurement it was plus one, and here I talked about minus one. This is the same reason why we can measure the phase margin with respect to zero degree instead of the minus 180 degree that you can find in textbook theory. The reason is the following. In textbook theory about control loop stability, the open loop gain is defined as the product of the gains in the loop when we break the loop at the summing node. In our measurement, the system is running closed loop and we measure the loop gain in the closed loop system by breaking it the feedback path. And the signal will run through the transfer function h and minus of the summing node or the error amplifier and then g. So the measured loop gain is minus g times h, whereas we had g times h in textbook theory. And this minus gives us an additional 180 degree phase shift. And that's the reason why our instability point is at plus one, whereas in theory it is at minus one. In this video we did look at how to measure the stability of a simple buck converter with voltage feedback. If you want to learn how to measure current feedback or multi-loop systems, have a look at our webpage, at the application notes on our webpage or at our YouTube channel.